I don't know about you guys, but I think this card is personally flirting with me. <laughs> What's up, guys? Today I want to talk about some magic art that's near and dear to my heart. Yes, I'm talking about the provocative art of Robert Bliss. See, back in the day, magic art used to be the wild, wild west. Artists had a lot of creative freedom when it came to interpreting their art prompts and using whatever medium they wanted, depicting whatever fantastical creature they wanted. And Robert Bliss kind of took those creative freedoms to the extreme. So let's just say Robert Bliss got a little infamous for hiding a bunch of dongs in his artwork. <laughs> I'm not joking. This man put literal dinguses in his magic artwork. And these cards were printed by the millions and distributed across the entire world. And sometimes people didn't even realize that there was a dong hidden within the artwork. So I want to take you guys through a quick journey through the more erotic magic art that is Robert Bliss's catalog of cards. Some people might be unaware of Robert Bliss's artwork, so we're going to start with his most famous card being Reanimate, and this card first printed in Tempest is one of the most strongest reanimation spells out there. One black mana to get any creature card out of any graveyard for the low cost of some life, like this is heavily played in EDH, it's a strong card, and it's also been reprinted with new artwork, but I see so many people prefer this original artwork because look, it's so striking with that white background and this ghoulish grimish guy coming out of it with pulled by its chains, it's so cool, I love this artwork. But enough about reanimate. Let's talk about the meat and potatoes, the reasons why you're here. Show us the dongs, Andy. All right, here you go. You wanted the dongs, here are the dongs. <laughs> so the first Robert Bliss dong is Binding Agony. Now this guy, he is what he is. He is the mushroom tip on top of his rocky shaft. Look at this guy. It's so obvious. No one in R&D saw this and was like, man, we gotta change this artwork. No, they knew what they were printing. There's no two ways about this. I'm sorry, <laughs> but look at him. I even keep a copy of Binding Agony in my tray binder below to Fairy Time, Time Raveler to remind myself how much of a dick he was in standard. <laughs> so next up we have Inkundu Cyclops. And let me talk about Inkundu Cyclops. This card is, uh, I think, personally flirting with me. Look at this guy. He is jumping through the air with everything out. He is free. He is open. You know, he's got his lovely wife with him. I'm in love with this artwork. Also, he's got two moons behind him. What's going on here? A little Star Wars action? I think this card is, I you can't make perfect more perfect artwork for this card. Robert Bliss knew exactly what he was doing. Um, this Cyclops, his Anaconda is so long that has little Anacondas coming off of it. I don't even know I can show this artwork on YouTube. It's so personally flirting with me that I, I don't know. This card wasn't obvious enough. It has even more phallic imagery hidden within it. You know, below the lady, we have two mushrooms that are quite, uh, you know, suggestive. And not only that, the lady and the mushrooms are sitting on quite this long, slender tree branch. And she's kind of sitting with both her legs over it. It's very, you know, provocative. It's very, you know, very symbolic. And, you know, Robert Bliss is not only the, the, the king of just, like, shoving it in your face, but also the king of subtlety. Like, this just, this whole artwork has, it's just all, you know dongish <laughs> coming up next we have goblin soothsayer and on goblin soothsayer you think that the the artwork would have a little more obvious dong maybe that little twiggy leg that's kind of hanging under the branch would be it but you know take some time really look at it really analyze this goblin think about where is the dong in this artwork where you know we have a goblin he's reaching out for some guts on a tree with this cool moon in the background with this like light shade of red very interesting the, the green is really popping on this but why is the green popping so much? Why is this goblin popping out so much? Oh my God, the goblin itself is the dong. His whole body is just this wrinkly goblin green dong. And I'm sorry, once you see this card, you can never unsee what this goblin really is. I hope you never have to encounter this card in the battlefield, never in a Cranko deck, all right? Never in a Wart Raid Mother deck. This artwork is the literally, the literal embodiment of great endowment. That's all I have to say about this card. Goblin Soothsayer is mwah, a masterpiece. And next up, let's talk about Teferi's Curse. Now, Teferi Curse has the curse of having the bulgy wolgies going on. His lone cloth cannot hold anything. But besides that, I actually think the artwork's pretty cool. The modern chromaticness of the blue, you know, the blue card frame with the kind of the greenish blue, whatever this creature is, an ogre with the light blue green background. It's very interesting. And then we have the, the little animal kind of making everything pop. And Robert Bliss is known for like kind of having these like 
very fleshy animals with like red tip of their nose, tip of their butt, tail. And it's very interesting artwork. But again, this guy has nothing. He has no chill. He's just bulging and bulging all over the place. Like Robert Bliss just does whatever he wants to do in his artwork. I, this is just, who at Wizards thought this was a good idea? I think it's a good idea. But who at Wizards thought this was a kid's game that's got printed all over the world? We love it. We love it for it. We love it even more. <laughs> Morg Thrill now. Morg Thrill. I did not think that this had any, you know, dongs going on in it. But the more I looked at it, the more I realized that the Morg Thrill went under the Kellogg snip snip, if you know what I'm talking about. Those bandages on around his neck. Yeah. Who thought that Magic the Gathering needed a circumcision thrill in it? But he's here and he's here to stay. Uh, it's kind of, I'm sorry I had to say those words to you. I honestly do. But, you know, I really need to talk about this Dawn with a face because Morgthrill is quite the fleshy affliction on my life. And good thing it's a not a great card because I'm sorry, that thing is, is terrifying. But, you know, it's it, more and more, it's more, this, this Robert Bliss Hulk is more and more interesting. And I, I hope you guys are enjoying this journey. I think right now we're going to delve into some more subtle artwork that Robert Dong did. I mean, Robert Bliss. And because uh, sometimes he, he he hid them a little bit a little bit more interesting more and little he used the use of, of negative space to hide his dong so let's go find have some nice little dong puzzles going on let's go let's go check them out so I love the artwork for Keening Banshee this Banshee in front of the moon with the shadows casting over her face and her hair twisted and contorted and corrupted with her feet kind of flowing through the air very striking. And for a very long time, I had no idea that Robert Bliss hit a dong in here. And can you guys see it? He's using the use of negative space to hide it. But I, I had to be pointed out to me before I actually realized where it was. And I'll give you a few seconds, you know, where could it be? Is it in the city in the background of Ravica? City of dongs, you know, is it in her hair? It's actually in between her feet. You know where the third leg would be, but you know, this is a little lower down. It's in between her feet. It's using the negative space of the moon glowing through to actually hide a dong. And once you see it, you can't unsee it. You'll always, your eyes will immediately go to it. You'll always be looking for it. I'm sorry I had to show you that, but um, it's just such a cool thing to hide it in there, you know. Definitely at R&D, they didn't notice this one. And another one that they really didn't notice was Polymorph. Now, Polymorph has some really iconic art. This creepy bunny that's kind of bursting into a new creature, his arms, his hands, and being contorted. And it's the classic Robert Bliss animal, you know, very beige with the red eyes, the red tail, the red ears. It's iconic Robert Bliss. But for the longest time, no one realized that there was a dong in it. In a 2015 interview with former art director Sue Ann Harkey, she actually spoke about the artwork of, of Polymorph, and she was quoted saying, Bliss got me in so much trouble. Oh my God, because Rob being the naughty chap that he is, would put penises in everything. Speaking specifically of Polymorph, nobody saw that penis for ages and ages until we printed millions of them. And ever since then, everyone looked for penises. And then I couldn't commission them anymore. And I actually couldn't see the dong either. After like many years of playing with this card, and I've never actually been able to see it until it was pointed out to me. So I'm going to give you a few seconds, like, can you see it? Like, maybe move the card some different angles, spin it around. But if you look at it, you know you realize mm, there's something off about that tail. Ooh, it's kind of curved around his butt. Yep, the rabbit is the dong itself. And when they went to go reprint this artwork, they didn't commission new artwork at all, actually, because this card is so, like, the artwork is iconic. This bunny being corrupted and bursting a new creature. This is gorgeous artwork. What are we going to do? How are we going to hide the dong? So Wizards decided to actually crop out the tail and just kind of put it in a little more zoom-in shot so you, you could hide the dong. But you and me know. We both know now. There's a dong hiding between those card frames. Another use of like hidden dongs and negative space is Goblin Elite Infantry. This one also took me a while to figure out, you know, besides this all, all this artwork being very uh, pointed, you know, with the, the, the knife or the red tip and the heads being very, uh, um, the negative space actually between the knife and the head is what a lot of people think to be as a dong, you know, it's kind of the same shape as the Keenan Banshee version. Um, but just all together, this artwork is, and most of our Bliss's artwork is just very uh, pointed. Now, not all of our Bliss's artwork has been so provocative. You know, his artwork for pacifism has reprinted tons of times in core sets. It's one of the most iconic arts. It's been replaced now by a giant doing knitting, but I just love this artwork for pacifism. 
Phyrexian Purge is another artwork that no one has ever found a dong in. And some of these, I'll throw them up on the screen, but I'm not sure if you guys can find any. I can't really find any more extra dongs. But some of this artwork, like Withering Boon, I don't even know I can show this stuff without being censored on YouTube. After making artwork for Magic, Robert Bliss moved on to be a concept artist on famous movies such as The Dark Knight, the Harry Potter franchise, Divergent, Hercules, the list goes on and on. He's still pretty active as a concept artist. You can check out his Instagram and his website. His artwork is gorgeous, has gotten better over the years. And let me tell you, those dongs are still showing up today. Thank you guys for coming on this journey with me through the more provocative art of magic. If you like this kind of videos, you know, talk about some old magic art, you know, don't forget to subscribe, like this video, leave a comment where you think you, you can find the hidden dongs because I couldn't find them. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya. How are you going to commission a new piece for Polymorph when you have this beautiful artwork? It's just that Robert Bliss was like, here's my dong. <laughs> oh, I can't say that. <laughs>